Cameraman here, folks. All right. Uh, a lot of you guys, when I put a story time up, more story time. You guys love the story time. A lot of people don't watch them as much as the car stuff because I know it's a car channel and us getting crazy and everything. But I know a lot of you guys do appreciate the story times. And um, do I have a lot of stories? Absolutely, I have a lot of stories. Um, but you got to understand something. In the time that I grew up and the neighborhood I grew up in, a lot of these story times, I show respect to the people that I was involved with in these stories. Um, a lot of things I don't feel comfortable talking about. Like to give you an example, to risk it all, to risk it all. I don't know how many of you guys have risked it all, but I've done it on many, many occasions. I was young, I was directionless kind of. Um, I wanted it now kind of attitude and I did whatever it took. Okay, I never killed anyone, thank God. But in the environment that I grew up in, who knows where things may have went, you know, if certain things didn't happen that had to put me to uh, an end at, you know, the life I was living and the craziness I was uh, participating in and the people I was around, what they were doing. And, you know, a lot of us really grew up a lot really quick when we were young. But um, I give you a quick story time. Bouncing around in the snow, it's a freaking blizzard. Uh, well, blizzard, this was nothing actually, but I'll be right back. Business calls. How dare that person interrupt the story time? So, anyway, this is going back to the summer of 92. Okay, there was a guy, um, a bouncer that I, I didn't know him personally, but I used to see him in the gyms because I used to bounce around to all the different gyms. And um, his name was Pat Bannon. And he was bouncing at a bar and I used to bounce as well and um if you guys don't believe me I'm not talking smack if you look at the community section I had about a 19 and a half inch neck you can see the photo but anyway um so what happens is he's in the bar bouncing and a fight breaks out somebody cracks a bottle over his head he gets pissed off um he leaves goes to his car the fight spilled out into the street, so he goes, jumps in his car, grabs a 357 Magnum, and shoots one guy, uh, injures him, shoots two other guys, kills, I think he killed both of them, but anyway, there were two off-duty cops, okay? He leaves, he goes home, leaves the gun in his house, Packs a bag, tells his mother, I'm out of here. I got to go away for a little while. She has no idea what he was doing. And um, he's on the lam. He's on the run. And he had a lot of connections. A lot of people, you know, uh, were looking out for him. They were hiding him. They had him in different places, different houses. I heard the mafia was involved, hiding him out, helping the kid out or whatever. And, um, I mean, he was on the run. So now they start putting pressure on a lot of... Uh, mob locations and mob businesses and like yo don't hide this kid he killed a cop you know he's got to go i mean he can't hide forever so guys started putting the word out on the street you know get patrick and bring him in because enough's enough i mean you know he's wrecking business for everybody and the mob doesn't like when you interrupt their business now as you guys know we grew up in queens the epicenter of uh organized crime and all that nonsense and um you know, Brooklyn, obviously, and Queens, and wherever. So, one day, I'm minding my business, okay? And this was in the height of me doing ridiculousness, crazy stuff that, you know, I, I may I may speak about it sometime in the future, I don't know, but we were wild. We were wild men. We were just, uh, it was do what you want. If you want it, take it mentality. It was, it was, it was cowboy shit. It was... Like I said, risk it all, we risked it all. I mean, we risked it all. You know, get caught, you're, you're done, it's over. You're, you're, you're not gonna see the light of day for 25, 30 years, whatever the case might have been at the time. So, it's in the height of my activity of, of being wild and, you know, 
living like a maniac. And I'm in uh, College Point, Queens, where my girlfriend, who's now my wife, lived. And her niece, Alyssa, who's now 30, was a little kid. And the ice cream truck. I, I, I was always, yeah, ice cream. Let's go, everybody. We're all getting ice cream. So I'm there, and uh, I have her by the hand, and she's probably, I don't know, man. What could she have been? Three? Something like that. Maybe three and a half, whatever. So I'm getting, what do you want from the ice cream truck, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, I'm at the truck, and I was always aware of my surroundings. Cause you had to be. When you were living like that, you had to always, you were just, it's not a, it's not a good way to live. It's not a fun way to live. And um, you always, you always got to have eyes behind your head. So I see a car pull up a black car. I'm like, fuck, man. So now I got to watch. Now I got this little kid holding her hand. We got an ice cream, water and ice cream. I'm looking at the side of my eye. And the guy, I see two guys come at me. I'm like, fuck. And I see handcuffs. I see the gun on the hip. They're plain clothes detectives. They're like, they're, I'm like, I'm done. It's over. I said, it is a wrap. I'm done. They got me. Fuck. And that feeling, you can't describe it. That you just, the life just rushes out of you. But you keep a straight face. You got to keep a cool face because that's just the way it is. You're on the street. You're a street guy. And they go, they're coming at me faster. And they go, oh, you Pat Bannon? And I go, no. They go, they come closer. Oh, shit. So we thought we had our man. I go, no, Pat Bannon. I go, what are you talking about? I'm not Pat Bannon. I knew what was going on. He goes, you know Pat Bannon? I go, no, nah, I don't. I said, mate, you know, I might have seen him in the gym here, there, whatever, but I don't, I'm not personal friends with him, no. He's a little bit older than me, you know. He was like 25, I was like 22, so it's a big difference back then, you know. And um, the cops, like, you know, you, you, you don't see him around? I'm like, no. Nah. He goes, we thought we could have a tank top on, I was all jacked up. They thought they, thought they had him, because I was could have resembled him. We had the same, everybody had the same kind of haircut going on. I had hair, ha <laughs> ha. So they start questioning me. What's your name? Ba -ba -ba. Where do you live? Um, we heard you have him here. I'm like, I have him here. What are you talking about? Yeah, we heard you're friends with him and he's hiding out here because College Point's a little weird. It's kind of like off the beaten path in Queens, if you guys know about it. So being young and dumb, you might think that, yeah, that would be a great place to hide out. You're in the middle, but meanwhile, you're in the middle of Queens. But after they leave, like I said to myself, oh my God, man, I thought I was done. Like I, I saw my whole life pass before my eyes, you know? And did it stop me? Maybe for a half hour, 45 minutes. And I got right back in my seat and I continued my craziness of what I was doing. But ate the ice cream and that was it. Back then, why? Because back then when you heard Patrick Bannon blew away these guys, you weren't like, oh my God. You heard it. You're like, oh man, that's fucking crazy. It was going on like crazy. We knew guys that got trunked. You know, they they would just disappear. You'd be like, where is this dude? And then you'd find him in the trunk of his bend somewhere out east in Long Island or something. You know, oh, he was in the trunk for three weeks. It stunk. The neighbors found him. Guys, were, bodies were dropping everywhere, man. It was crazy. It was a, the, the late 80s, early 90s, was 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 the wild west in Queens, man. It was just insanity, and I was mixed right in the middle of it. Um, stuntman, not so much, because believe it or not, the crazy mentality was I didn't want to involve stuntman in what I was doing because I said to myself, and my rationale was like, if we both get caught, I'm gonna feel like shit. That number one, my brother's in jail. And number two, my mother's going to lose two kids. And if that makes any sense, I said, if it's just me, it is what it is. So me and my friends were running wild. We were running wild. And I, I, I'm going to talk to a few of my friends and see if, you know, we'll put some of the stories out that we really, I mean, the down and dirty stuff. But let me know in the comments if you want to hear some, you know, about what, what we were doing, how we were living and what we were up to and how it came to an abrupt ending because it had to. It was crazy, man. We got 
rolled up on and the big boys were after us if you know what i mean and not the street guys either the legal guys it was it was I, I i almost feel like it was another life i give you an example me and my father in the backyard and a helicopter came flying over the house i'm like what the fuck it's like yo what the fuck's it? i mean you could see the pilots i mean we were getting hit with dust and debris and they hovered over us for like 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and then they took off. I'm like, what the fuck, man? So my friend calls me up. I might have said this in one of the stories. So my father's like, well, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know why there's helicopters over the house. My friend calls me up. He's like, yo, let's meet up because we never spoke on the phone. I meet him. He's like, yo, man, the helicopters were flying over my house. I said, they were over my house too. So they went over my house. They went over his house. That was my partner in crime back in the day. But, um... Yeah, it was it was crazy. Then we spoke to our lawyers, and the lawyers said, "Yeah, that's what they do. What the what they do is, the feds will they'll be investigating thirty guys, right? So the FBI will fly over thirty different houses of people, all different investigations, and every one of those guys is going to think they're public enemy number one. I'm like, oh my god, if they flew over my house, man, this is serious. So it's like a tactic that they use, and the, the lawyers are like, ah, don't worry about it. Yeah, it happens. Well. But a little bit of my mentality and what was going on back in the late 80s, early 90s, when we were on the streets. And this is like when Sammy the Bull flipped. He's got a new channel right now, which actually, it's an interesting channel, but I don't agree with what he did. It's just, I don't know, man. It's almost like, and people could say, oh, you don't know, you don't know what you would do in that situation. Well, I do know what I would do in that situation. And I was in that situation, facing just as much time as him. And I kept my mouth shut, okay? Out of respect for my friends, out of respect for myself and what I did and what I knew I was getting involved in, okay? And the fact that you got to live with yourself, that's just the way it is out on the street. But I see a lot of these younger guys, like my kids and their friends, and they don't think the way I thought. They don't act the way I acted. It was almost like a like a front of you you had to be that way you were a street guy you were from queens you 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 heard somebody got killed you just went ah oh, that sucks and you want to you understand you had to have that that mask of of like toughness and you know what i mean like if you watch like goodfellas and you see the way they act and that's that was our our playbook for for for, for life the way we saw them acting and the people around us and the older guys and you know what I mean? Where now people have compassion, which is the right way to be. I, I didn't have compassion for people until I started having kids. And I was like, well, that could be my kid, man, you know? So it just, listen, it is what it is. A little story time, a day in my life where I should have saw that and straightened my shit right out. But I just looked at it as, ooh, another close call, another brush. Oh, they got nothing. Wow, that was, oh, that was crazy. Boom, back in the seat and let's go. Let's go get it right now. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe, folks. I know you guys like the story times. I like doing them. Not as many people watch them, but I don't care, man. Um, listen, we're going all the way. We're going to hit 100K pretty soon. We got a funny coming up with something funny. We also had a crazy video that we did. We're going to put it up. It's insane, but whatever. You guys will see it. All right, a little something, something, a little story time. Like, comment, subscribe, folks. We're going all the way. You know it.